and we're live. It was easy. Who knew it could be this easy? If only life was this easy. Hang on one second and let me make sure I got the right Wi-Fi going here. Looks like I do. Okay. I'm going to share this out to uh, the Facebook minions. Okay. That's the only thing with uh, using this technology is that it does take 20 or 30 seconds to post stuff out. And when you do that, it means that uh, if someone gets tired of seeing me sit here, rock backwards and forwards, waiting for something to happen in the background, that, you know, it, uh, that's, you missed your ideal engagement uh, moment when I can go, wow, you should wait, don't go. But in this case, you probably should leave because this could, this could, be crazy. Who knows? Um, Tony, hey Tony, how you doing, man? You should be playing a game with somebody. I thought you were booked for tonight. All right. Um, tell me more about it in the in the comments, and uh, we'll chat. So I thought what I would do is try and catch up on what's going on in the channel and uh, blogs and be all the crap, right? Uh, the uh, the volume of content has dropped off uh, uh, precipitously. Now this is telling me that we're having issues with connect bandwidth, but I'm just gonna keep chatting and maybe it'll record and post later, so who knows. Uh, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff going on in my part of the world. And as the, the header says on the video, it's been, I think six weeks or maybe even longer that I've done an actual a live stream or even recorded any video at all. I think the last video I did might have been uh, Demiansk Shield, uh, which maybe hasn't even gone out yet. So uh, I do have some content for you guys. I've been working with a handful of other folks on Board Game Geek, and uh, I'm reposting some of their content and most of it's very fresh. So it's new stuff. It's not something that's been sitting around for three years. And I hope hopefully they're topics that are a little bit different and they're uh, more interesting uh, than perhaps what I'm doing right now. And I'm taking a, not a break per se, but uh, just a, taking the foot off the gas in terms of the, the cadence that I'm trying to, that I've been running at for the last five or six years. Uh, mainly due to complications with work and family life and other stuff, which is really neither here nor there. If you're a member of some of the other smaller uh, private groups I'm in, you'll get a little insight into what's going on. Nothing tumultuous, just life shit. But uh, when you gotta make hard decisions that impact other people, and in some cases impact them in a massively negative way, then that uh, it kind of wears on you a little bit. So I have been in a, a uh, situation where literally for the last six weeks, I have not been able to really focus on gaming or playing games or getting getting engaged and uh, really tight with uh, the games I'm playing. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of going through the motions. So I started to stop for a few weeks. Um, I did play last night uh, with Tony, funnily enough, and we played OCS. And uh, playing opposed seems to be fine because... That's a social engagement and I'm enjoying that, but I'm not enjoying uh, sitting alone with my own thoughts playing a game. I'm finding that the game is not letting me escape uh, as it used to. It is uh, really uh, just more of a lead weight around my neck of something like it's more of an obligation. It's kind of a weird situation. But all that said, uh, I, I do feel like the last six weeks have been awesome because I, I got to go on a, a kind of 20th anniversary uh, honeymoon with my wife for a week. We did uh, some travel overseas. I found the recovery from the travel particularly difficult because I was actually in a plus seven or plus eight time zone for two weeks straight, which is the longest period of time I've been overseas in probably nine or 10 months. And it's taken me a long time to kind of get back on the clock here. And in since that time, I've done a fair bit of local US travel that uh, has kind of messed with my clock a little bit. So been a bit out of whack. Uh, what has all that got to do with wargaming and the big board and all that crap, right? Um, nothing, uh, nothing just except that I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not here. So I thought what would be fun is to share my little list of A, what I'm currently playing or trying to play, and then B, some of the games that are starting to uh, really pull my attention 
and uh, my interest that I would like to add to and have added to, you know, this this list here of uh, the chronological walkthrough of World War II. You know, we're still working on that. We're we're doing some stuff in 1944, right? We've got uh, Beyond the Rhine, which is sitting right here, and I'll tell you what's going on with that. Uh, we've got some Agents gaming. We finally wrapped up a Carthage game, so that's all good. And I've got a great. Uh, I shouldn't say it's a great write-up because I wrote it. I don't know if it's good or not, but uh, I've got a write-up. <laughs> we'll finish that uh, sucker off. There's probably five or six parts, and if you go search the blog, you can find out the play that Tony and I have done together. And I've got two or three more parts to come, so that'll be cool. And there's some games that need to get played there, and there's some modern games and some Napoleonic games and some American Civil War games and stuff right so we uh, let's talk through that a little bit and i've added to some of that and i've got some of the games here that we can have a look at and and i'll tell you about why i'm interested in playing them and i see we've got six or seven comments so let's deal with some of those and i appreciate you guys tuning in too uh it's been a while so have you guys all uh, jump in is great um <clears throat> devin ma'am thank you you are always here appreciate it hey antonio thank you for the uh, the uh, I almost said consolation for the 20th honeymoon. This week it feels like a consolation. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm in the doghouse with my wife right now. Uh, and uh, I have no idea what's crap. Uh, hang on, Tony, you're a funny guy. JTM, what's up, man? Uh, yeah, Tony, your first turn moves, you were too shy. You should have gone for it. You, you, you could have not uh, used any supply other than movement and I'm happy to redo this with you, you could have encircled all those units and all the guys up in those mountains to the left and uh, totally uh, not had to do any fighting at all. Uh, so there, there's those things. All right, um, <clears throat> let's have a look at what, what I think might be cool to play if I can get my shit together, right? So the first thing that's really tugging at my heartstrings because I'm looking at the map and I'm just gonna turn the camera around and actually I need to cover I need to cover what we're doing, what I'm playing first, right? And then be structured and organized and OCD, and then talk about what I want to play. So what I'm currently playing is Beyond the Rhyme. And if you recall, we got stuck in turn three because I foobarred one of the rules and I thought it was a big deal. I reset the game in Vassal and started playing again, and I'm now in the third turn uh, on Vassal. I think I need to finish the third and the fourth turns and then that puts me kind of back to where I was in this. I'll show you here, right? So we're, we're right there, okay? Big, big game. Um, pretty interesting stuff. But I, I kind of, I, I feel like I've, I've let the allies down. Now the funny thing is that in my play on Vassal, which is really tedious, playing solo on Vassal, I don't know how people do it. Um, uh, you know, I haven't done much better as the allies. I kind of suck. So um, I don't know whether I'm favoring the Germans or whether I'm not being aggressive enough or I'm being too aggressive. Maybe I need to, you know, pull back a little bit and not be so aggressive as the allies on in the first blush. Because I really, if you recall, I, I wanted to explore doing something with either Bradley or Patton in the south and seeing if we could get a better cadence of activity down there and push more supply down there than up in the north. And uh, that hasn't really worked out very well for me. So we're in that and I need to grind my ass out and do, grind my ass out. That really sounds really bad. I need to work through the next turn and a half on OCS uh, Beyond the Rhine and, and kind of deal with that. And then we'll get back onto the physical board and we'll do some live play and we'll try and work it out. I'm kind of got to the point now where I think we'll just, we're just going to play this game and we'll see what happens and fuck it, right? We'll just 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 write it off as it is what it is and, and deal with it. Um, what else am I doing? I'm playing with Steve, my Australian buddy, and some of you have met him at Game On. We played Third World War together uh, with Mike Valance in uh, uh, Seattle. And he and I are playing... Uh, the Arctic Storm from GMT. I read quite a bit about this game before we played it and it, I was very jaded about playing it, but Steve promised me it was going to be a fun game. And he was right, it is. And I think the naysayers, I would say in general, based on the way we're playing the game together, 
that the naysayers who are saying that, you know, the Soviets don't even need to attack and they can still win the game are either A, stupid, B, never played, C, stupid, uh, uh, because it is a wonderfully uh, nuanced and tight uh, set of victory conditions that really gives a, a, a good feel for some of the some of the choices that were made. Now, are there some hacky things in the game and some gamey things? Yeah, there are. You know, you've got some partisans that are maybe taking out a battalion of bad guys, right? Nah, that's nah, not happening. Or, or there's uh, <clears throat> two battalions of uh, bad guys surrounding the partisans and they retreat from the... It's not... That's not happening. So there's some gamey shit in it, but it, it's not bad. No, it's, you know, I should say it's not. It's not that it's not bad. It's a good game to explore the 1939 Winter War. Uh, it, I'd, I would put it on par with, uh, and certainly more evocative of the situation than Winter War from um, SBI. So there's that. Uh, let's see. I have been uh, goofing around a little bit with uh, Autumn for Barbarossa, the SCS game. Uh, came across a rule that I realized I may have been playing wrong with my three or four buddies here in Austin, which kind of pissed me off because uh, I really despise playing games incorrectly. But it's all equal on both sides, so we'll call it you know, bygones and just keep moving on. I think I've got to a stopping point with that game. I've played eight out of the 10 turns and I feel like we're, we're kind of really done. Um, actually, it's not true. It's not eight turns. I think we're on turn seven right now. So, um, but the German juggernaut has run out of steam, and the Soviet uh, replacement well is overflowing. Uh, so I think we're kind of we're kind of at a, a stopping point there. It's uh, there's certainly not going to be enough for a counter counterattack and push anyone back, and there's certainly not enough focus from the Germans in terms of force. Uh, consolidation to push the game forward uh, there's a ton of comments here and I'm going to try and check this real quick with you you guys are just chatting amongst yourselves blah 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 hey Antonio uh, I think there's some good comments down here uh, let's talk about SES starter games in a second and um, and I'll, I'll come I'll come to that in a minute all right and uh, Yeah, I do have some wall maps. Uh, all right. Um, I've got some maps. I'll show you those in a minute if you want. Uh, so where were we? So I said Arctic Storm, TR, uh, BTR. Sorry about the disjointed uh, conversation here. So hang in there. We're all we're, we're going to get to the new shit in a minute. Um, I had Pericles set up. Cleaners came before I got back from overseas. Broke my frame that I had uh, Donatesk airfield set up and that game was all over the floor. No idea where all the pieces are. I've actually got to count the pieces. It's still sitting on the floor in my, my uh, where I keep my games because I'm so pissed I haven't touched it. Uh, Pericles was all pushed all the, I was in turn two of the solo, uh, not solo, the uh, tutorial game. I was in turn two of that, all the counters all mushed back up into a nice little pile and very well organized. But uh, that's lost, so I've got to reset, reset that and get, get stuck into that again. So that's kind of disheartening. Okay, so I think that's it. What else am I playing? Besides the, the Edge of the World with Tony from OCS, and that's more of a learning game. I don't really count that as a like it's not on my list of chronological game plays and stuff like that, but we're, we're, I'm helping him learn that game so that we can play a campaign or a mini campaign of some type. Okay, so enough bullshit. Let's um, <clears throat> let's look at stuff that I'm, cu I'm like really curious about. So check this bad boy out. Okay, uh, let me let me show you the box first. Okay, so this Bloody Monday, it's a block game, and it's one of the it's a, a very interesting block system. I'll, I'll say that much. It's a, you know, it's unique. It's nothing like a Columbia Games block game. Don't expect that, but you have the same amount of rules, uh, seven or eight pages of rules. Really clean, uh, I shouldn't say clean. Fairly concise, relatively clean, Italian translated to English with uh, oversight by a English speaker, if you count a Scotsman as an English speaker. And... 
uh, I have not had any involvement in the development of this one. I had been involved in a little bit of playtesting and critiquing of rules for some of the other games. This one's better, so I, I need to stay out of the way. Uh, this is the Battle of Borodino. Uh, of course, Bloody Monday, right? September 17th or 19th or something like that, September 17th. No, June 18, 12, no, no. Is it 17th? It is. Oh, come on, Sharp, it's gotta be here somewhere. Whatever date, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, very keen to play that on this map. Look at this map. It's huge, it's so sexy. Can't just get that anywhere. That's the uh, expanded Gore-Tex map. Uh, it's not Gore-Tex, but it's like Gore-Tex. It's a plastic map. You can roll it up and all that sort of bullshit. So I'm very interested in this, and the mechanics are cool because each unit has uh, a gra graded value based on, you probably can't see this very well, but based on the color of the dots. So black dots are weak, white dots are, dots are stronger, blue dots are stronger still, and red dots are stronger still. It may not be blue dots, it might just be red dots. But a uh, very cool concept, and it takes a different number of hits to reduce each strength pip on the, the block. It's kind of cool. Lots of other innovative things. There's a good command structure in here. Each leader has a certain number of stars on its block, and you've got to, uh, you've got to reduce your block and then replace those uh, stars from your Napoleon or your opponent's, your, your Russian counterpart, I forget his name. Uh, uh, you've got to replace them from his stars. And so you've got to feed your your generals more stars so they can do more things. So do you push early and go hard or do you wait a while and then go hard later? Who knows, right? So it's a, there's lots of subtle onion-like layers in this. Very cool. I'm very excited to try and play that. I'm actually thinking of putting it over the top of my BTR game and... Uh, Sitting that big map on a, on a sheet of Plex over the top of my BTR game and just playing it because I'm kind of keen on that. Now, I do have this other game, talking about uh, switching errors quickly. The Pacific War is from uh, Lock and Load Publishing. Now, I saw Joel's play of this and he said he struggled with the rules a little bit just because they kind of they look kind of, they looked kind of verbose to me. I read through the rules and the rules seem fairly clear, but it, apparently in action, it's not. Uh, so I'm, I, I have to get my head around a Pacific War game that allows me to get a bigger view than um, the Guadalcanal campaign or whatever the case may be. This was some of the smaller stuff I played with the Pacific War module from um, Victory Games, Mark Herman's title, which by the way I love. I would love to play the campaign game of that. But solo, it's just not working for me solo. It really is an opposed game. And my buddy and I who played, uh, I think he's more inclined to wait for the next iteration that's coming from Nuts Publishing, but which, you know, who freaking knows what's going to happen there. Uh, their recent edition of Urban Ops, uh, lots of negative talk about that game in terms of the, uh, the rules clarity uh, translation issues, right? So... Uh, it's disappointing because I had high hopes for that game as well. Okay, so the Pacific War. So I, I, that is going to happen. That's going to happen this year. I'm going to make that happen. Uh, I'm also going to play, ho hopefully next week, either Thursday or Friday, I'm taking a day off, and my buddy Pete and I are going to go face-to-face -face and play Austerlitz from Hexasim. You know, the uh, it's the Rising Eagles game, it's called. And uh, it's the uh, next game in the series of the... From Fallen Eagles, uh, and I want to say it's Didier Roux, but that's not who it is because he's from um, Pratt's and Editions. But uh, anyway, we're going to play, try and play that, or uh, maybe DM Ben Few, where we're arguing about what we're going to play. I need to give uh, a little bit of love to Ty Bomber. Uh, I need to play this uh, What If 1938 game to validate for myself that the his approach to games, he has two or three systems he uses, and he uses the same systems and the same rules, different map, different counters. Uh, so it kind of the Columbia Blocks model of, of war games. Um, I want to prove to myself that I'm wrong and that he is picking up the nuances. Because when I read all the blurbs and the history and the, the 
justifications for his games, I get really excited to go, that's going to be awesome. I'm so excited to explore what could happen in 1938 or in the future Putin strikes or whatever it's the case may be. Uh, I, I really want to experience that. And then when I, I get a draft copy of the rules and I read them, I go, oh, hang on a sec. This is just like this other game. Same rules. A different map. How... Where's the where's all the stuff about special forces or the air war or you know the, the 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 need for someone to go do A B or C? It's no, it's all kind of genericized and uh, and I'm frustrated with that because I think there's opportunity for really cool games with Thai Bomber, but the there's a level of uh, generic system applied. And I don't know whether that's because that's just easiest for him or it's but what he believes works best or it's because he just wants to slap a bunch of games out there and let people buy. If he sells 100 or 200 of each, it's all good. I, I'm hoping for more out of that game and I'm going to compare it to the other what if out of Counterfact. I think it was Counterfact 1939 what if. Or, or, it's got a similar construct. We're dealing with the Czechs, Soviets, and the Germans and the French army coming in and it's a similar game but slightly different. Okay, there's that. I, I have three games here next from Hollenspiel and I, I really feel horrible. I have set this game up once, had to pack it up, just it was not gonna get the time to get at it. Uh, I really want to play this game. I've read the rules. I am excited about it. I'm excited about the morale track. The morale track, morale slash fatigue track, encapsulates so much of what is critical in the American Civil War at the tactical level that uh, I'm stunned at the clarity that that brings and the choices that makes you have. And I haven't played the game yet. I went and watched some video play of... Uh, of uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle was playing uh, this this game. He quite enjoyed it as well, uh, and that's what's got me motivated to try and get to that. I don't know when I'm going to get to that, but it's on the the more immediate list than, than the future, the distant future list. Hang on a second here. This one is different because I'm using High West Rye. It's a double rye versus uh, Colonel Taylor's. Uh, rye, which is a, a, a little less, um, it's got a more, a more of a bitter, bitter astringent flavor to it. Supply lines of the American Revolution. Who, who, who knew? This is really interesting. I want to play this game. I, I want to, I am going to. This is on my bucket list and it's going to happen this year. Uh, and why? Because it's a, it's, it's one of those things where some of these wars are not just about you know guys fighting each other and poking sticks at each other. It's it's about the logistics or it's about the operational aspects. And I think this game, based on a rule read only, captures some or if not all of that economic slash logistical challenge that uh, is relevant to the American Revolution. And once again, only other American Revolution games I've played have been tactical level things that uh, Great Battles of the American Revolution or whatever it's called. Fine system, cute little uh, tactical chip concept. Love that. Would play that game anytime. Don't own any of them. I sold them all because I, I don't need to own them. Uh, I, it's not something I'm going to play multiple times, but I, I'm interested in the, in the battles per se. But I'm more interested in the opera operational aspects of that, uh, that um, conflict, just as I am with the... Uh, the American Civil War, I'm very, very curious about the operational aspects, which is why the great campaigns of the American Civil War is going to happen at some point as well. All right. And guys, just if you're wondering uh, why, if you're asking questions that I'm not answering, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's that uh, when I have the comments up, uh, it, it interferes with the screen and all sorts of stuff. So it's challenging to read that and talk to you at the same time. Okay, tiny battles. Oh, sorry, tiny battles. Table battles. Table battles. Uh, tiny battles is a publisher of very fine games. Uh, table battles. I ha I played a game. I'm so excited. I need to play more because I'm not sure I played right. Uh, there's 
There's something about the way the rules are written for this guy that I'm not gelling with my little brain. Uh, and it's not the game I thought it was, but it is an interesting game. And I think if you want a filler game that you can just, I, I put it in my backpack and took it with me on my last trip and sat in my hotel room, slapped it down on the, on the bed, threw out the, the blocks, played a game. It took 30 minutes, uh, took the dice with me, the whole shooting match. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, <clears throat> and I think there's lots of expansion opportunities here because each game is built around a card that has a little scenario. Let me show A little scenario on it. It's very warm in this room. It's got hot in here also. Uh, let's see. Here, so... You can see through the plastic, probably not the most gorgeous representation of the card, but that's the battle card. And so he can punch out, uh, you know, 10 battle cards for 10 bucks or 20 bucks or five bucks or however much he wants to charge for it. I don't know how much you need to charge to sell, but he could sell 10, 10 you can have 10 battles with this uh, just by buying uh, a little pack of cards, which makes it an ultimately highly expandable system. Very cool. Not planning on playing this again in the immediate short term, but I've got a couple of trips coming up. Uh, one which is going to be freaking long haul thing uh, to uh, what well, uh, And um, uh, I'm taking this with me. We're going to play that guy while I'm away. Now, October 24th, some guys are playing this on Vassal uh, from the Advanced After Combat Guild. I'm going to sit in and watch and try and learn. It's still in shrink. This is how badly I suck with this game. I really want to get this game to the table. So I played at the Advanced After Combat Con, uh, which I went to uh, three, two weeks ago, maybe. And I was so tired from travel. Uh, that was on the back end of being away with my wife and going to this conference overseas. And uh, I was supposed to play games Saturday. I got, got in Wednesday night. We finished up Carthage, which was awesome. <clears throat> and uh, finishing that up physically with the game, uh, moving the pieces around was awesome because Tony and I had played that on uh, on Vassal. And it was a very uh, in, enriching experience to play with him face to face, first of all, and then play the game, uh, play the game um, with, with, the, with the components. So, uh, what was my point about that? Yes, so I sort of played there, and I think it's uh, very cool. A lot. There's one big other big game that I'd like to try and get to this year, and it's a solo uh, game, and I want to get to it because I think I want to try and play the game and then possibly move it on uh, into someone else's hands. And uh, I've just recently read two books on the Falklands War, and so I want to try and have a shot at uh, whether it's Discord. Uh, gorgeous game, great map. Long rule book, lots of play aids that are available for it. I'm going to try and do the cheaters version of playing and basically pull out the extended sequence of play and just freaking set the game up and have at it and work it out as we go versus uh, trying to study the rule book in detail. We'll look, we'll look things up on the fly. And that's always fun because you get to see me... Uh, Curse and scream of the game. All right, let's check in on these comments here. And then, uh, uh, what do we got here? Hey, Michael, good to see you. I turn on what's up, dog? What are we doing? And Greg is here. Nice to see. Um, you're making comments and I can't, I can't scroll up fast enough. Uh, 7th of September, 1812. So I was close. So it wasn't the 17th of September. It was the 7th of September for Bloody Monday for Borodino. And Christopher, yes, that is my game room. Um, I'm fortunate enough that we have a, basically, our downstairs was put together by uh, either uh, three hobos and a blind, a blind man or uh, some handyman who wasn't handy. He was like the left-handed handyman. Uh, it, there's one, two, three rooms and a bathroom downstairs. And I took out right here, this was a closet, that red line. Yeah, well, this was a closet here. I took that closet out, which is kind of why, see how that's kind of 
sagging right there just a little bit. Had to put some supports in up there to kind of hoist stuff up because it was a support. Who knew? Um, and uh, so this is my game room where I put bigger games out or I put multiple games out and play. And then I've got a, what was a bedroom uh, that has all my games in it. Uh, when I say all my games, it's got a closet and it's got, you know, two bookcases with my uh, set of games. And I have a table that I made uh, that's about seven feet long. That's two big pieces of mesquite that I cut down from a friend's ranch and then had them planed down to uh, make a table. And I have a couple of games set up there right now. Uh, so I'm lucky to have a fair amount of space to play. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. So that's the story, Chris, to answer your question. So I do have some storage up there. I've got some games there. They're kind of overflow things, and uh, some of those maps are extras. And those and the the um, Taiwanese map and the Poland map I've just whacked up because uh, they were printed off by Mitch Land at the Advance After Combat Con, and he was just giving them away. And no one else was taking them, so I took some. Uh, and I intend to have some of them framed at some point, but I'm not too fussed about framing. Uh, let's see, okay. Uh, Pacific War gets you hot. How is it? You know, uh, Chris, I have not played that game yet. I've read the rules. I think it's going to be fine. And the Pacific War from Victory Games is great, but you have to be prepared to do the work. Uh, oh, my, oh, oh, your wife, John, your wife wants to see this glass. This gla These glasses are insanely gorgeous i have two left out of six been married for 20 years we have had some relatively wild parties um it's a very thin glass and then this is a very heavy pedestal of uh very heavy pedestal of glass and it balances beautifully unless you knock it unless you bump it uh, which is how they all got broken uh i can't find them anywhere online if your wife finds them online, please tell me because I need to buy some more because they're just, I, I, they're adorable uh, to drink out of. And they're the only kind of cool glasses I own. Everything else is Ikea shit for a dollar. That was a wedding gift, by the way. I don't spend money on, I don't spend money on anything except my games and technology. All right. So there you go, John. That's you. Um, I've been gone for how long? Um... Let's see, I'm trying to rewind the clock. I was gone for two weeks and then I got back on the 4th or 5th of October to Dallas. And I stayed in Dallas until Saturday to play games and uh, just basically played Carthage and hung out with a bunch of guys and had a few beers uh, and some whiskey and some more beers. Uh, and then came home on the Sunday, uh, and my wife was, was with me part of that time, but I hadn't seen, I hadn't seen my kids. For, so by that time, I hadn't seen my kids for two full weeks. Uh, get back, kind of get landed in a bunch of personal shit at home with kids, you know, having issues and all that sort of stuff. And then last week, I had to fly out to uh, Cincinnati. And I was gone three days there. And uh, now I've got to leave again next week week I think at the end of next week to do some stuff I've got two trips to do and I'll be gone for possibly another two weeks so uh, a lot of miles this year I think we'll crack uh, we'll crack the 200 mark this year probably um, all right I'm trying to look at the other questions here right okay whatever all right so um <clears throat> Here's the other thing that I am trying to do, and it's and it's a long-term project, and I'm not planning on getting started anytime soon. But just to tease, like kind of tease you, little little tease, uh, with a glary light. There's four maps for the game City Fight there, and my intention is to I've written up the specifications for a scenario that will involve set in the modern period in Fallujah or Ramadi, one of the two. Uh, and we're going to use the uh, city fight system and some updated weapons and maybe uh, some tech uh, enhancements, a little bit of tech enhancements to uh, do a 
uh, capture and hold uh, establishment of a, a they have a special name for them in Ramadi and I forget now dang it but they would go into a portion of the city and they would uh, take control of a building or set of buildings and then they would make that a forward operating base of sorts and then do hearts and minds patrols and try and establish the control of the area and make people feel more safe and more comfortable and so what I thought I would do is uh, facilitate the attack onto a, a, a base type structure that the, uh, the rebels or uh, uh, insurgents have and then uh, let them go through a setup exercise in terms of setting up the uh, base and then have the counter attack coming in from the ISIS guys or Al Qaeda or whoever it was that were fighting at the time and play that out. And you're saying, well, why do I need four maps? Well, I need four maps because we're going to do this double blind style and I'm going to let you guys control either the uh, terrorists, the, the insurgents, the bad guys, the rebels, or the, um, or the, uh, the Marines uh, and special ops guys, or both. I haven't resolved that in my mind yet as to how much work I want to do running a double blind game. But I think, I think that might be kind of cool. All right, that could be kind of fun. Uh, I'll move all the pieces around and do all the... You tell me where you want to send your guys and maybe it'll be, hey, I want to move to this building and do A, B, or C. And that might take two, three, four turns and stuff might happen along the way. And I'll try and abstract out uh, your need to have in-depth rules knowledge of the game and just let you focus in on the tactics and the strategy that you want to execute to uh, either, you know, attack or defend or whatever the case may be so we'll 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 work that out i've got the ob done for it i've got a set of random events organized for it which are pretty funny uh i'm just trying, trying to work out how often we do those because they're very very short turns we're talking about a minute 20 30 seconds per turn basically you know each guy can move each hex is 50 meters. The guys can move uh, 100 meters a turn. So we're talking about a very granular level of combat. I actually find this to be probably one of the most profoundly interesting uh, squad level games that I've played. Uh, that, you know, it's mainly modern technology, right? So it's, but it's all set in the 80s and was designed in the 70s or whatever. Uh, but it's pretty freaking awesome. So, um, and we'll have choppers and so air support and artillery and jets and all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to abstract all that out. So they're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to have a set of shits you can use to, to call in strikes from your uh, forward air controller and stuff like that. So it should be fun. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to take some work. We're going it, you know, it, it'll be next year before we even start talking about it uh, online. But there's a little sneak peek at that. Which that's the kind of stuff I do when I'm not playing a game or uh, not reading the rules or whatever. I'm trying. I'm trying to stage up some longer term projects that we can be looking at in 2018 or 2020 or whatever the case may be, so that we'll have some interesting things to do together in the future. And we haven't done a lot of play by poll stuff in the past. Sorry, we haven't done a lot of play by poll stuff recently. Uh, I've run some play by poll games where I post a poll up on the blog. And you get to vote on what should or shouldn't happen. And uh, some of those games have worked out and some of them haven't. Uh, once, once, the, once the interest dies from you guys, I, I stop because I, I don't care. I'll just finish it off by myself and no point posting uh, you know, a, a report on it because it's half you and half me. So, uh, so we've done a fair few games. We did a TCS game. We, I'm trying to think of some of the other games we did now. Now that I, I'm about to talk about it. Oh, we did uh, uh, the uh, Napoleonic Brigade system. We, did, we played Austerlitz uh, by, by poll. Uh, that was kind of fun. And uh, two or three other things uh, as well. Like um, I'm trying to think Patrol. We did Patrol as well. The old SBI Patrol game. Uh, when I was first looking at this, I was almost going to do Sniper because it's got hidden movement and I was going to get you guys to send me your moves. And then I thought, well, taking moves from 10 guys and rationalizing on a board, that might be a pain in the ass. And uh, I'm not sure how to manage that. So we'll see. Uh, that may all end up on uh, a future project. Who knows? All right. A couple of quick questions. Here we go. Um, 
ISIL, ISIS, well, exactly. Uh, yeah, hey John, if you if you go search on, on my blog on bigboardgaming.com and uh, up on the top right hand side, you can do searches or you can click a box and do a search and search Leros, uh, L-E-R-O-S, you'll see that. And I think, I wanna say, um, Austerlitz is the other thing you can search for. And that will allow you to um, see how I ran those games. And uh, I also obviously did a play by email game as well. Uh, <clears throat> what was that? That was that uh, play by email system, the Pratt's and Editions game. I forget what it's called. All right, okay. Let's see. So I think. I think that's enough 40 minutes of BSing, right? Um, so thanks for hanging out. And thanks for joining in. And uh, I will uh, talk to all of y'all, all y'all, all of y'all, some of y'all soon. I look forward to, uh, we've got some cool posts coming out from other folks on the blog. So go check that out at bigboardgaming.com. You got Twitter, you got Facebook. You can't find me, you don't deserve to find me because I try and be where I need to be. I don't do a lot of stuff on Board Game Geek anymore and I certainly don't do much on CSW. Um, uh, our next next um, live video I'm gonna do is gonna be, it's gonna involve uh, uh, talking about pre-orders. I'd like to know what everybody's pre-ordering and I'll share with you what I'm pre-ordering too. I'll talk to you all soon, bye.